This is One on One. Welcome to the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. I'm Steve Adubato. This is One on One from NJ Pack. We are pleased to welcome Rachel Barton Pine, an internationally acclaimed concert violinist. Good to see you. Great to be here. I'm going to get a couple of facts on the table. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if my research is right. Uh, child Prodigy, you started playing at three? Three and a half. Oh, yes. sorry. Uh, you <laughs> played with the Chicago Symphony at 10? Yep. How does that happen? Well, I made my debut as soloist with orchestra when I was seven, and then the Chicago Symphony appearance was thanks to a local competition, um, and it just really inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing. Did you fall, you must have fallen in love with the violin. Exactly. I, when I was three, I saw some middle school age girls playing violin in my church, and they had on the most beautiful long dresses, and I loved the sound of the instrument, and that was it. I was just obsessed. And as soon as I started lessons, that was it for me. So, so just, okay, it, that was it for you, then, but, but here's my problem with this. I also, uh, by the way, I'll plug a couple. Help me plug these, and I'm going to tell you what I have a problem with. Tell me what this is. Mozart. This is your CD? <laughs> My Mozart. new one, it's coming out in January. Okay. And um, it's the complete Mozart Violin Concertos with Sir Neville Mariner and the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. I've heard of them. Really Next. a dream come true. Watch, watch us do this. Next. Okay. Oh, I think I know where you're going. Just keep going. <laughs> Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, my last CD. Mendelssohn. Recorded in Germany. Yes. Next. That's my metal band, Earthen oh. Grave. <laughs> Your me I'm sorry, your metal band? <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> well, hold on, let me get this straight. You play with the Chicago Symphony at 10, you're a child prodigy at 3, and you're into heavy metal. Well, I discovered metal a couple <laughs> of years after that, when Santa Claus brought me my first transistor radio, and I started searching up and down the dial for what other kind of music existed, and practicing classical eight hours a day, I really needed something to relax to, wow. which you wouldn't think metal's relaxing, but it did the job. Amazing. <laughs> Growing up as a kid, you were not uh, born into great wealth? Oh my gosh, well, far from it. Um, my father was unemployed through much of my childhood, and my mom was raising me and my younger sisters and helping take care of all of the things I needed for my musical studies, driving me to mm. rehearsals every night and homeschooling me at the suggestion of my school principal. Mm. Um, and so it was really a lot of sacrifice and a very tenuous existence. Our, um, electricity and phone were always being cut off and sometimes we were one missed payment away from losing the roof over our heads and to be pursuing something like playing the violin in the face of all that almost seems nonsensical but I just really believed that this is what I was meant to do with my life and this is what I can contribute to the world by uplifting people's spirits with my music and I just trusted that things would work out somehow and thanks to generous supporters and friends and family and even strangers, um, it all ended up working. But you also wound up starting a foundation. What's exactly, well I realized that the best way that I could give back and honor those who helped me along the way would be to return the favor and try to support the next generation. So we've actually um, supported more than 50 young artists at this point. Um, young people from the age of 10 um, to their late 20s who are you know, studying on the brink of important careers and, and really don't have the financial means for, it's not the lessons, because you can usually get a scholarship you know, at your music school, but it's all that other stuff, buying the sheet music of the pieces you're supposed to study, paying for airfare to a competition or an audition recording session, even concert clothes. I used to mm -hmm. try to get stuff at the thrift store and fix it up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, new strings for your violin, your piano accompanist fees, all of that really adds up and that's where we come in and make the difference. You know, you face so many obstacles, economic and otherwise, but, but um, in reading about you, most folks who know your work, who know a little bit about your background, also know you had a, a experienced a terrible accident. Um, Chicago train or subway? Well, it was a suburban line. A suburban line. Yeah. What year? 95. Almost, 10, almost 20 years ago. And you walked away from that changed dramatically. How? Well, yes and no. I mean, certainly the physical injuries I sustained were massive, and it took 14 years and more than 40 surgeries to complete round one of putting me back together. And, you know, that's, that's a lot. Um, but, you know, I look at what other people have to go through. I've never had a disease, for example. No. You know, so it's like, 
what I dealt with was serious, but on the other hand, somehow or another, the skills that I gained as a young person um, during my student years, just holding on to hope that things would work out even if I couldn't quite see how, and having that perseverance <coughs> and that faith, um, I think those parts of my personality, um, I was able to call upon them when this, this next circumstance um, arose. So you're about to play in a little bit, but I just want to be clear on something. Your ability to move around is not what it was because? Um, yeah, so I, I had injuries to my lower limbs and, you know, um, rely on the latest in modern technology <laughs> um, yeah. to help me, help me walk. But luckily, you know, hmm. you play your violin with your upper half. <laughs> so uh, And so the good. whole positive attitude thing, which people can often trivialize, you live it every day. You don't just talk about it, you live it. Well, I definitely, others. I definitely, you know, if anybody is going through something challenging, stressful in their life, I definitely don't want to be one of those people who's like, oh, just, you know, smile and mm -hmm. get through it. Because certainly I had more than my fair share of moments that, you know, I was disheartened and, you know, had to try to figure out, you know, what does life mean and how am I going to make it and things like that. But, you know, I just looked to my friends for support and, your and family. you have a little and one? I am a glass half full person you have a little one a child? I do How old? yes um, three years old and you tour with your child and your husband I do well my husband's been traveling with me since 96 and he runs a computer company exactly. I think, while he's on the road yeah and he has to operate on US business hours <laughs> no matter where we are on the planet so it's pretty that's nuts great. but much better than a Skype marriage that's for oh, sure I love it. and we have a nanny from an agency of nannies for traveling musicians I love so this. it's the four of us everywhere we go well, what are you going to perform for us? Well, I thought I don't have a whole orchestra with me today, but I can still just give you a little preview from one of the Mozart concertos by playing uh, my own cadenza that I wrote for the first movement of my favorite one, number three in G major. A cadenza is? Um, it's kind of like the guitar solo at the end of a rock song where you get to improv <laughs> on kind of the melodies from the tune. So it's my own original composition, but it's taking Mozart's melodies and sort of playing around with them. And you will not be breaking into any heavy metal, I just want to clarify. Probably not. Probably, I just want to clarify. <laughs> uh, Rachel Barton Pine, I want to thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to listening to you, okay? Thank you. Great. Just check it out. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. 
celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. And by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV, N13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been provided by Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, United Airlines, the New Jersey Education Association, NJ Best, Josh S. Weston, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.